Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate ringsidenews.com. A lot of news going on in the world of wrestling right now. Make sure you stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the very latest details. Lots of stories that are ongoing. Lots of new information coming out. And you can check out Twitter.com slash NoDQ, D-O-T-C-O-M and subscribe to mobile notifications so you can get the very latest details as they become available. Let's get to your questions now. First one comes from Brayden. Thoughts on Del Rio's scary news? There are a lot of questions about this and again this is an ongoing story. There's new information coming out almost on a daily basis. It seems actually on a daily basis. It is a story that I feel is very bizarre and there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Why is there no police report? Was Paige there? Was she not there? There's one report that she was there. There's another report that she wasn't there. There's one report that it was a homeless man. There's another report that it was a driver who drove away. And then another report that the guy left on foot. What's the deal here? What is the 100% truthful story? That is what everyone is waiting to find out what really happened here. I would rather not speculate too much about it because people were jumping the gun when the, when the story first broke on Sunday. People thought, oh, Del Rio is very unprofessional and why do people even work with the guy? And then on Monday it came out that he was stabbed and people apologized. So. I will wait and see how this plays out, but like I said, it's very bizarre and one has to think that there is something going on that has not been made public yet, but we'll see. This one comes from Levi James. If rumors TNA is set for a rebranding by Corgan and WWE buying TNA's video library, could this deal have gone any better? Like the Del Rio story, this is a situation that has not been 100% confirmed. Until WWE actually announces something, it's not official and things could change. WWE could buy the tape library tomorrow. They could buy it next week. I'm not sure what the deal is right now, but I will say I think it's inevitable. I think it's inevitable that WWE will at the very least acquire the tape library, if not the entire company. I think WWE is only interested in the tape library because realistically, that's the only thing that has any real value. WWE can make a lot of money by putting out AJ Styles DVDs with the TNA footage and the Kurt Angle footage, the Hardy Boys footage. That stuff has value, but as I've said over the past several months, TNA is a dead brand and Billy Corgan might end up buying TNA and rebranding it, but it is going to be a uphill battle for Billy Corgan. It is going to take a lot of resources to create a new brand and a new identity for TNA and I'm not sure it can be done. Quite frankly, I, I think the odds are very much against Billy Corgan even if he's able to buy the company and keep it going, the question is for how long? How long would Billy Corgan be able to make it work? And it really feels like TNA is just hanging on by a thread and, and just the fact that Dixie would sell the tape library to WWE to keep the company going for a couple more months so they can do one or two more TV tapings, um, it's a really bad sign for TNA to be able to survive long term. This one comes from Angelo C. Is WWE going in the right direction with the US and IC titles? First time in a while that I look forward to the title defenses. I do feel that making Roman Reigns the US champion is a good thing for that title because it is elevating the title. Roman Reigns is a guy who's going to be pushed no matter what and since he's the US champion now, the US title is going to be a top priority like it was when John Cena was champion. That's the positive. And with the IC title, I feel it's not so much the person holding the title, but the storyline. I think WWE's done a tremendous job with the Miz and Dolph Ziggler storyline. It's very intriguing. And because of that, 
the IC title is elevated and also the fact that Miz has been champion for a while and they're playing up on that, that also helps elevate the title. So yes, I, I do feel on both, both championship reigns, WWE is doing the right thing and making those titles credible. And it is the first time in a while. I mean, for the U.S. title, since John Cena was champion. And for the IC title, it, it's been several years since the title has really felt this important. Got this one here from Richard Henderson. How long do you think Seth, how do you think Seth Rollins is doing as a babyface so far? Not so good. I think that WWE has dropped the ball with Seth Rollins as a babyface. He should have been a babyface right when he came back, when all those video packages were shown of his recovery. The fans were looking forward to his return. There was that anticipation. And I think that he would have been the easiest babyface in the world. But instead, WWE fought it, had him come back and knock the fans. And now they're screwing up with him. They're, they're making him a, a baby face that you really do not sympathize with. He's cutting this promo where he's talking about how Kevin Owens is cutting corners and kissing up to people, which was the same exact thing Seth Rollins was doing. And Seth Rollins is denying that they're the same thing when really they are. The characters were exactly the same. So it makes Seth Rollins' character come off like a hypocrite. And then on Raw a couple of weeks ago, Seth Rollins is coming out and, you know, he's injured and he's not cleared to be on the show, but he's out there anyways. And he's told to leave. The security's telling him to leave. And that's what he does. He just leaves. Now, I know he's really hurt, but in the storyline, it makes Rollins' character look weak and it makes his character look like a coward. Would Steve Austin ever just walk away because people tell him he's hurt and he should not be there? No, Steve Austin did the exact opposite. They tell him to not wrestle, he cannot wrestle, and Steve Austin gives the stunner to everybody in sight. He just rebels. Um, that is a cool baby face. That is a guy you want to root for. Seth Rollins walking away. I find it hard to root for the guy. I find it hard to root for the character. And the same thing with the promo. Him being whiny and complaining that Triple H backs, stabbed him in the back. Um, I just, I find it hard to like the character. So yeah, I, I, I do feel WWE's dropping the ball with him. This one comes from Austin West. Does WWE feel more pressure to put on better shows in some cities than others? I think perhaps the actual city might make a difference here and there. You know, if they're in New York, there's going to be a lot of pressure to really put on a stellar show. I think for most of the talent, it doesn't matter. I think every show is just as important as the last one and every city is important. And really every city is, but I think from the corporation standpoint, some markets might be more important like New York or Chicago or Los Angeles and some events, there might be more pressure to really put on the best show possible like WrestleMania or the Royal Rumble, you know, doing the Royal Rumble at the Alamo Dome. There's going to be that extra pressure to put on a better show and have more big names there and just uh, use every gimmick possible to fill, fill that stadium. So I, I do feel there is to some degree, but I think for most of the talents, they're going out there and every night they're going to try to put on the best show possible, regardless of whether it's Madison Square Garden or a, a small city in Mississippi, you know. This one comes from Pinello14. What are your thoughts on the video package for Emma's return? I like it. I like that WWE is building up to her return and it's a sign that they are invested in her character and they're going to do something with her. Now, this whole Emma Lena thing or whatever they're calling her, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Now, maybe they're going to bring her back as a baby face, but it seemed like she was doing really well with the character she had developed right before she left. So for me, it would not make a lot of sense to change that character when she was building some momentum with the character she had before she left. Uh, time will tell if WWE is going to move her in a different direction, but 
If it was me, I would let her come back as the character she was before and see where it can go before changing it and doing something different with it. Got this one here from Beast Slayer, and this is uh, also regarding Seth Rollins, and this is uh, a continuation of what I was talking about earlier. Is it me or is Seth Rollins' promos becoming repetitive? I would say so, and part of that is just due to the scripted nature of the promos, and I feel as good as Seth Rollins is with the delivery of his promos, sometimes they do come off as very repetitive and overly scripted. And I remember even a year or so ago, Rollins was coming out and doing these promos about being the man, and it got to the point where some fans were doing the what chants at him, and I think there was even a boring chant at one of the shows, and that's just because it's the same thing every single week. And I think as good as Seth Rollins is at delivering promos, sometimes the material is just so repetitive and it's the same thing we hear every single week and he comes off whiny sometimes and even as a baby face he's coming off as whiny that yeah, they are becoming very repetitive and I think you need to let the guy speak from the heart more and let him do his own thing rather than just scripting him word for word every single promo and that's what it really feels like that that Rollins promos are pretty much just him reciting a prepared script word for word. Got this one here from Cakes925. What up Aaron? I enjoy the content. Thank you for that. First time asker, do you see The Undertaker returning at Royal Rumble and how would you book it? Uh, this goes back to that earlier question about WWE trying to put on um, better shows in certain areas. I think for the Alamo Dome, there is definitely an increased chance of somebody like The Undertaker showing up. WWE, like I said earlier, will want to use every possible resource to fill up that stadium for the Alamo Dome. There will be that extra pressure to make this the biggest Royal Rumble they've ever done, more so than if the Rumble was in a 15,000 seat arena. Um, so because of that extra pressure, I, I think the odds are increased of somebody like The Undertaker appearing. And if Undertaker was going to be there, I mean, I think I would go ahead and book The Undertaker for the Royal Rumble and have him do a match maybe with even John Cena. Um, you, could, you could do that at WrestleMania, but, you know, Cena versus The Undertaker is one of those few dream matches that WWE has not done yet. And also... I think there's a possibility of Cena going for the for the world title at WrestleMania. Um, so maybe WWE could do that, do Undertaker versus Cena at the Royal Rumble instead. Um, I'm trying to think of possible opponents for The Undertaker. There's not a lot of choices left. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely consider having Undertaker there. I mean, why not? You're trying to sell out that stadium, you, you need every big star you can possibly get. So, Undertaker's from Texas, makes sense to me. This one comes from Mr. Puzzle. Hey Aaron, what has been your favorite NXT TakeOver so far and why? I would say the first NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn, and really it's a tough call because there have been a lot of solid NXT shows, but that was the first one in Brooklyn and that had the match of the year. Sasha Banks versus Bayley. Uh, that was voted the match of the year by NoDQ.com visitors in 2015. Also, you had the uh, Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens ladder match. Um, just a really strong show. You had Jushin Thunder Liger there. Um, really entertaining show from start to finish. I think when I did that review, I said that there was nothing I could criticize about that show. I mean, it was as close to perfect as possible. Just a very enjoyable two, two and a half hour show. And really you could say that about a lot of the NXT shows. So they've all been really solid, but if I had to pick one, I would pick that first show in Brooklyn. This one comes from Daniel Jobber. Luke Harper is being advertised for Raw events. If he goes to Raw, we've likely seen the end of him and Wyatt and as a heel, eh? It's looking like Luke Harper will be drafted to Raw. He did make his return at a show in Chile, which was a Raw branded house show. Um, and apparently he got a huge pop from reports I've gotten and from what I saw in the video. Um, so yeah, it's looking like he is going to be on Raw, maybe as a babyface, um, 
Maybe they'll put him against Braun Strowman. You know, Braun Strowman is saying he wants real competition. So maybe next week on Raw, Luke Harper shows up and that sets off um, a battle of the former Wyatt family members. Um, so I could very well see that happening. Luke Harper coming back and feuding with Braun Strowman for a while and uh, seeing where that goes. So yeah, I, I could see Harper coming back on Raw and perhaps being as a babyface. Got this one here from Sean T. Flick. Do you think Cena will ever be universally liked again? He seems to be getting more cheers and is speaking a lot of truth. I, I doubt he'll ever get 100% um, cheers from fans, but the thing is, it's not like people really hate Cena. I think Cena is a guy that people like to hate. They like to boo the character just because it's the cool thing to do. And I think for years, fans have been booing Cena, not because they hate the guy, but they dislike the character and how it has not really evolved over the years. And WWE never did the heel turn or changed up the character significantly. I think that's why he hasn't been liked as a character. I think people do universally like Cena as a person and as a worker and a guy who has been busting his ass for the company and just been the flagship for many years, putting in the hours and being the first guy to show up and the last guy to leave. I think he's got the respect of pretty much all the WWE fans, except for your your psychotic WWE fans that still think it's real and still feel that Cena is somehow responsible for um, being a babyface and never turning heel when, it, when it's not his call. I think if uh, Cena... If Cena was asked to turn heel, he would do it in a heartbeat. You know, he's that guy. He will do whatever the company asks him to do. And, you know, there's been reports that Cena has asked to turn heel and got turned down. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that the Cena character that we see now will never be 100% cheered by fans. But, you know, I think as time goes on, people will ease up on him and he'll never get, like, booed out of the building like he was back at One Night Stand or the uh, 2011 Money in the Bank and some of those shows around that period. That'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the subscribe button and stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest regarding Del Rio, No Mercy, the TNA situation, and much more. See you guys next time.